Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're continuing on with our registration form implementation for our secure contact form application. So towards the end of the last video we got the registration form set up and if we send in some data at this point it's not actually going to work. So let's just fake this off, click register and not a lot actually happens. So there's a few pieces to this puzzle. I'm just going to jump into the registration controller now, close others and make a start on this. So when our register action is hit, a new instance of our member entity is created. Then we go ahead and create the form using the member type as our form template and we pass in that new empty entity as the data for that form. Now it doesn't really have any impact but if we had some properties set, for example, we, we might do something like this, set the username to Ted and then went ahead and refreshed that, then that property would be added in for us. Okay, so we don't really need to do that because that doesn't make sense in the context of a registration. It's just interesting to see. So much like when submitting the form in our support controller, the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and handle the request. Now you can see inside the support controller, what we did is we had a way of creating the form and displaying it. And then when you submitted that form, it got posted off to a different action. And we can follow that same paradigm inside our registration action, but it comes with a sort of a caveat. So I want to make you aware of both alternatives, so to speak, as my preference, honestly, is to try and separate things as much as possible. But there is, as I say, a little gotcha to doing so in this instance. So we'll start off with the sort of the way that they, they show in the documentation. So we'll say form, handle request. And so we don't actually have the request. So let's inject that. And that's cool. And we need to handle that request. And that enables us to determine if this form has actually been posted or submitted or not. And so then we can say if the form is submitted, and the form is valid and we're going to add some validations on this form then in this case we want to do some interesting things such as setting the user's password to their encoded password equivalent and saving that user off to the database and there is one other sneaky sort of thing that you're probably not going to think about straight away but we actually do need to log the user in as well they're not just going to get automatically logged in but for the moment we'll skip that piece and we'll just go with the most immediate problem so we'll say if the form is submitted and the form is valid, then in this case, we're going to have a member and we need to set that member's password. And we know that we need to set that password to some encoded value. So we'll create ourselves a variable called password into which we will store the result of the encoded plain password. So we'll say this and we need to get from the container the security password encoder. So that's a service that comes with Symfony that you can get access to immediately, which is going to enable us to encode a password. And this encodes a password based on what we've got set up in our security.yaml. Now we don't actually have any encoder set up for our member. So we're going to need to set that up, but we'll see what happens anyway when we go through and we try and do this. In other words, it's going to blow up. Just be prepared for it. So we can see that we need something implementing user interface. And we also need this plain password string. Unfortunately, well, we have both of those things. Our member implements user interface. So we can use our member as that first argument. And again, the plain password, well, that's something that we already store as a property on our member, which is quite handy. It's almost like this was all planned. And just to reiterate, the member object is now going to be populated with the form data that's just been submitted by the user. So we can say, get the plain password. And we should be good at that point. Our member should now have a password set, which is encoded. Of course, as I say, this won't work because we don't have an encoder set up, but just bear with us and we will fix that as we go through. Next, we're going to get access to the entity manager, which we're going to need because we're about to start working with the member entity. In other words, we want to save this member off to the database. So we're going to say get doctrine, get the manager, in other words, get the entity manager. And then with the entity manager, we can persist this member, which crucially won't actually save the member off to the database just yet. For that, we need to flush this change. So we'll say em flush. Now at this point, we should all be good, but because we don't have a return statement inside here, we're just gonna fall back to the registration form. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a flash message of success and say, you are now registered. Now that may actually throw, so we'll just declare that exception there. And if you're wondering how I'm doing that, I will link to a video on that in show notes. It's a plugin for PHP Storm. So as mentioned, I don't really want to show the registration form again, as we've just registered the user. We don't really want them to see the same form. That would be a bit weird. So instead, what we'll do is we'll just redirect the user to a route and we'll redirect them to the home page. 
Now, as I say, this isn't going to work straight away. And even when it does work, we're not going to be logged in. So two weird problems, but let's see it in action. Okay, so let's just refresh that because our user name was set. So just pass in any junk there. And we'll set a at b.com just so that we have an email that we're definitely going to have used in the future. So we'll register that user. And you can see straight away, no encoder has been configured for the account type of app bundle entity member. Well, it's proving tricky to copy and paste that, but I'll try. Anyway, jump back into security.yaml. And literally all we need to do is pop that in and repeat the same thing, the algorithm, bcrypt. Okay, so problem solved. Let's go back and try again. Okay, so next problem, I've not gone ahead and actually created a table for this entity. My mistake. Let's do so now from the console, PHP bin console, doctrine, schema, update, force. And then inside our date space, let's refresh the tables. And you can see in here, we have a table of member, the username, email, and password columns, which map up entirely to what we've got inside our member, which has column, username, email, and password. And remember, we didn't have a column set up for plain password because we don't want to store that. Okay, so, you know, third time's a charm. Let's try again. Okay, so we are successfully registered. It looks like I've not put a return statement in there to actually do the redirect. I'm forever doing that. If you don't return it, it's not going to work. But that should have redirected us off and we have got the flash message. And if we check inside the database, we can see our username, our email, encrypted password. Okay, so that's cool. But as I say, strangely, if we look at the bottom here, we're still anonymous. We're not logged in. So we're going to get on with fixing that particular problem and another problem around reusing existing email addresses and usernames in the very next video.